Elon Musk and Mukesh Ambani are locked in a battle for control over something you can't even see, the satellite spectrum. Why does this matter? Because whoever wins could change how millions of Indians connect to the internet forever. This isn't just about high-speed internet in remote areas, it's about dominance in one of the fastest-growing tech markets in the world. On one side, you have Musk Starlink, already running in over 100 countries, promising fast, reliable internet using satellites in space. On the other side, Ambani's Geo, the king of Indian telecom, insists that Starlink should play by the same rules as telecom companies. So, what's at stake? India's internet future. Will satellite companies like Starlink shake up the market and bring cheap, fast internet everywhere? Or will Indian giants like Jio and Airtel hold their ground, arguing for fairness in a market they've invested billions in? This isn't just a tech war, it's a fight to decide who gets to shape India's digital destiny. Let's break it down and explore how this battle for the skies could impact you, me, and the internet as we know it. What is satellite communication and why does it matter? At the heart of this big tech battle is something called satellite communication, or SATCOM for short. But what exactly is it, and why is it so important? SATCOM is a way to deliver internet using satellites in space instead of the traditional cables and towers we used to. These satellites beam internet signals directly to users on the ground. This makes it a game-changer for places where regular internet can't reach, like remote villages, mountains, or disaster-hit areas. Here's the cool part. Starlink Elon Musk's company is using something called Low Earth Orbit LEO, satellites. These satellites fly much closer to Earth, about 500 kilometers above the surface, compared to traditional ones. Because they're so close, they offer super-fast internet with much lower delays. Starlink already has over 6,000, 400 of these satellites in the sky, forming what's called a satellite constellation. Together, they provide internet to users in over 100 countries. Why does this matter for India? Millions of people here still don't have proper internet access. Satellite internet could be the key to connecting rural and underserved areas, bringing education, healthcare, and jobs to places that need it most. But there's a catch. Telecom companies like Geo and Airtel argue that satellite operators like Starlink shouldn't get special treatment, especially when their internet speeds compete directly in cities. And this is where the debate gets tricky. So, is satellite internet the future for India, or will traditional networks continue to dominate? Let's take a closer look at Starlink's vision to find out. Starlink's vision and India's potential. Starlink's mission is pretty bold, make high-speed internet accessible everywhere, especially in areas where it's hard to set up traditional networks. And for a country like India, the timing couldn't be better. India has the largest internet market in the world, with millions of people still waiting to get connected. That's why Starlink sees massive potential here. By using its network of low-orbit satellites, Starlink promises not just faster speeds, but also internet access in the most remote parts of the country, places where laying cables or building towers is almost impossible. But here's the twist. Starlink doesn't come cheap. In the US, the monthly subscription costs $120. For India, this might be a stretch for many users unless Starlink finds a way to lower its prices. Still, for those who can afford it, the promise of reliable, lightning-fast internet might be worth it. Now think about what this could mean for India's tech-driven future. Rural schools could finally access online classes. Farmers could use digital tools to improve their yields. Even small businesses in remote areas could go global. It's a vision of progress that's hard to ignore. However, Indian telecom companies like Jio and Airtel aren't thrilled. They argue that Starlink's entry could disrupt the market especially in urban areas where high-speed internet is already available. This clash of visions between satellite innovation and telecom tradition is at the core of India's internet future. Let's dive deeper into how these opposing forces are shaping the showdown. The geo of his starting debate, spectrum allocation and pricing. This is where the fight gets heated. Who should get the satellite spectrum and how should it be priced? Spectrum, in simple terms, is like invisible highways in the sky that carry internet signals. Companies need access to these highways to deliver internet to people. Starlink, along with companies like Amazon's Kuiper, believes that Spectrum should be given directly at low cost, as is done in many countries. They argue that this would make satellite internet more affordable and help reach remote areas where regular networks can't go. On the other side, Indian telecom giants like Jio and Airtel have a different view. 
They feel satellite companies should pay for spectrum through auctions, just like telecom operators do. Why? Because satellite internet, especially Starlinx, offers super-fast speeds. This could make it a direct competitor in cities where Geo and Airtel operate, not just in rural areas. The telecom companies point out that they've spent billions to buy spectrum for their networks. They think it's only fair that satellite providers follow the same rules if they're offering similar services. Starlink pushes back, saying its services are focused on areas with little or no internet and that their pricing is already transparent. This disagreement has become a big debate. Should India allocate spectrum at a low cost to help satellite internet grow, or should it hold auctions to protect the investments of telecom companies? This decision could shape how millions of Indians access the internet in the future. Regulatory Hurdles – India's Telecom Policies The battle over spectrum is closely tied to India's telecom rules, which are some of the strictest in the world. Normally, telecom companies have to bid in auctions to get the spectrum they need. They spend huge amounts of money to secure the rights to use these airwaves. But satellite internet is different. In most countries, spectrum for satellite services isn't auctioned. Instead, it's allocated at a fixed cost. This is where the clash begins. Indian telecom companies like Jio and Airtel argue that auctioning Spectrum is the only fair way, especially since Starlink services could overlap with theirs in cities. India's 2023 Telecom Act has added more confusion. It mentions that Spectrum for satellite communication should be allocated administratively, not auctioned, which matches global standards. However, telecom companies say this doesn't completely rule out auctions. The government is now stuck in the middle. On one side, they want to encourage satellite internet to connect remote areas. On the other, they need to protect telecom companies that have already invested heavily in auctions. The Telecom Regulatory Authority of India, TRAI, has been asked to figure out a fair pricing system, and their decision could have a massive impact. This isn't just about who wins the spectrum fight. It's about shaping India's digital policies and deciding how satellite and traditional networks will work together. The future of internet access in India is hanging in the balance. The bigger picture. The future of India's internet ecosystem. Let's zoom out and look at why this battle matters so much. India's internet future isn't just about big cities with fast connections. It's about reaching villages, mountains, and disaster-prone areas where traditional networks can't go. This is where satellite internet has the potential to shine. With India's space economy expected to grow to $44 billion by 2033, satellite technology will play a key role. Companies like Starlink promise to connect underserved regions, giving millions access to fast internet for the first time. This could change lives, opening doors to online education, healthcare, and e-commerce. But there's a catch. If Starlink and similar companies get spectrum at a low cost, telecom companies like Geo and Airtel fear they'll lose business especially in urban areas. They've already invested heavily in their networks and argue that a fair competition is necessary. What's really at stake here is how India decides to balance innovation with fairness. Will the government prioritize affordable satellite internet to connect remote regions, or will it focus on protecting traditional telecom companies and their investments? Whatever the decision, it will shape India's internet ecosystem for years to come, influencing everything from digital inclusion to technological progress. Conclusion This isn't just a corporate battle. It's a turning point for India's digital future. The outcome will decide whether millions in remote areas finally get online or if the urban telecom market faces intense competition. India has to walk a tightrope. On one side is the promise of affordable satellite internet that could transform lives. On the other are telecom giants who've built the backbone of the current system and fear being sidelined. The decision on spectrum pricing will set the tone for how satellite and traditional networks coexist. Will India lead the way in creating a balanced internet ecosystem? Or will it take sides? The stakes are high, and everyone, from tech enthusiasts to everyday internet users, will feel the ripple effects. And that's the story of India's epic internet showdown, a fight over the skies that could redefine how we all connect. If you're as fascinated by the tech battles shaping our world as we are, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel. Stay tuned for more stories that break down the biggest tech debates. Thanks for watching and we will see you in the next one.